Hello, class. Good to see you again. Everybody, this is American English File, second edition, book three, part one and two. Review and check. Let's see what you got. Part one, grammar. Everyone, circle A, B, or C. We have uh, about 15 questions. As always, stop the video, take your time, do it yourself. Very good. Now I need you to check your answers with your friends. Put your heads together. Okay, let's do it with me. Number one, my sister doesn't like fish or seafood. Number two, I have a quick breakfast because I'm usually in a hurry. Number three, I never watch TV when I'm having a meal. Number four, I usually drink a lot of diet soda, but right now I'm trying to cut down, cut down, have less. Number five, do you have any brothers and, or sisters? Number six, what are you going to do when you graduate from school? Number seven, I can't see you this evening because I'm meeting some friends. Number eight, would you like something to drink? Yes, I'll have some orange juice, please. Number nine, I can't open this jar. I'll help you. Number 10, that's a pretty dress. Where did you buy it? Number 11, I've never been good at saving money. Number 12, I've got $50 for my birthday, but I haven't spent it yet. Number 13, I've had this computer for about three years. Number 14, how long has he been living in Paris? And the last one, I've been going to the same gym for five years. Well done, you did great. Now it's time for vocabulary exercises. I've got one, two, three, four, five exercises for you. A. Circle the word that is different. B. Write the opposite adjective. C. Write verbs for the definitions. D. Write the strong adjectives. And E. Complete the phrasal verbs. As always, this is your gig. Stop the video, take your time, do it yourself. Very good. Now check your answers with your friends. And it's time for me to help you. All right, number one. Shrimp, mussels, duck, squid. Duck is different. Number two, lamb, crab, beef, pork. Of course, crab. Number three, cherry, pear, peach, and beet. Beet. Number four, raspberry, cucumber, pepper, cabbage, raspberry. Number five, fried, baked, chicken, roast, chicken. Now you have to write the opposite. Honest, dishonest, cheap, generous, selfish, unselfish, hardworking, lazy, quiet, talkative, or loud. Now it's time for the verbs. Number one, to spend money on something that is not necessary. Waste money. Yeah. Number two, to receive money from somebody who has died. Inherit. To get money by working. Earn. Number four, to get money from somebody that you will pay back. Borrow. Number five, to keep money so that you can use it later. Save. Okay, exercise D. Write the strong adjectives. Tired. Exhausted. Hungry. Starving. Cold. Freezing. Dirty. Filthy. Angry. Furious. And the last part, phrasal verbs. Let's eat out tonight. I don't feel like cooking. Number two, I'm allergic to milk. So I have to cut out dairy products from my diet. Number three, we live on my salary. My wife is unemployed. Number four, I'll lend you the money if you promise to pay me back. And the last one, I took $200 out of my bank account. 
take out, took out. Well done, you did great. And all the way to pronunciation. Circle the different words. All right? Okay, let's see. For example, number one, tree, e, peach, steak, beef, steam, steak, right? Clock, money, shop, positive, honest, money. Okay, phone, roast, sociable, o, account, account, fish, filthy, bill, tiny, chicken, tiny, horse, afford, pork, worth, organ organized, of course, worth. All right, you did great. Now underline the stretch syllables. Look, salmon, invest, immature, delicious, sensible. Easy, right? It's easy when your teacher does it. Let's go. Now it's time for my favorite part, reading. Everyone, read the article once. When did Bill Morgan's luck change? All right, you know the drill. Take your time and read it. I'm gonna wait. A few moments later. Great, you're back. Let's read it together. When bad luck becomes good luck. You've had a lot of bad luck in the past. A bad accident and some frightening health problems. Does that keep you from doing things in the future that involve luck? Like buying a lottery ticket? Okay, let's see. Anyone who has bought a ticket for the 500 million US dollars Powerball jackpot can only dream of having as much luck as Australian truck driver Bill Morgan. In case you have never heard of Bill Morgan, his story actually begins with some very bad luck. First, he was almost crushed to death by a truck accident at work. The accident did not kill him, but it did leave Bill with a heart condition. When he was given medication for the heart condition, Bill had an allergic reaction that caused a powerful heart attack, which left him clinically dead for 14 minutes. After being revived by the doctors, Morgan slipped into a coma for 12 days. During this time, his family was advised to unplug his life support system not once, but twice. Bill's luck began to change when he unexpectedly woke up from the coma without any permanent damage. Bill's bad luck was ending and his heartwarming story was just beginning. After getting better, the 37-year-old Morgan found a new higher-paying job and asked his long-time girlfriend Lisa Wells to marry him. Lisa said yes. A week later, Morgan bought a scratch-off lottery ticket at his local newsstand. Bill scratched the ticket off and realized he had just won a brand new car. A local TV news station was so amazed by Bill's story that they sent a crew to do a human interest story on Bill and his lucky streak. Well, nice. The news crew thought it would be fun to recreate Bill's buying and scratching off the ticket right on camera. No one could have predicted what happened next. The ticket Bill bought for the reenactment ended up being a $250,000 winner. And the best part is it all happened on live TV, almost causing another heart attack. All right. So as you can see, the luck changed after he had a very bad accident, but we're not done yet. I need you to read this again and mark the sentences T, true, F, false, or D, S, doesn't say. Again, it's your gig. A few minutes later. Okay, you're back. Number one, Bill had a dream about winning the lottery. Doesn't say. Number two, Bill's heart condition was caused by the accident. True. Number three, Bill was in a coma for 14 days. False. Number four, Bill's new job was in an office. Doesn't say. Number five, the news crew bought Bill's lottery ticket for the reenactment. False. Number six, winning $250,000 did not cause Bill to have another heart attack. True. Great. It's okay to be lucky, but you make your own luck with hard work, with discipline. And... You will be lucky automatically. I promise you. Let's go. 
Okay, you made it so far. Can you understand these people? I need you to watch the clip and answer the questions with A, B, or C. You know the drill. Let's watch it. <music> What do you like eating when you're feeling a little down? Brownies. I love brownies. Chocolate brownies. My sister would always make these brownies and she would let me eat them and they sent some to me a little while ago and they were just fantastic. Does it make you feel better? Oh, absolutely. They're great. Sometimes I give them to other people who aren't feeling so good and they feel better too. How often do you eat out? Lately I've been eating out a lot, um, but I try not to eat out to save money. What kind of places do you go to? I like any kind of Asian food, and steak is good, but it's kind of expensive. Why do you like these kinds of restaurants? I like them because they're, they're different. I like to cook and the food is different from the things that I know how to make. Do you have brothers and sisters? I do. I have one younger brother and he's 16 years old. How well do you get along with him? Ooh, <laughs> sometimes I get along better with him uh, depending on how much time we spend together. <laughs> Are you a spender or a saver? I'm a very big spender. <laughs> Can you give examples? Uh, bags. I uh, have a weakness for bags. I love designer bags. And uh, when I see something in the shop which is on sale and it's half price and reduced, all my savings for the last three months will go on that item. So bags is a weakness. Bags, bags, bags. <laughs> Have you ever taken part in a charity event? I have. I have been a captain at the Relay for Life event in my home state in Kentucky, in America, and we raise money for cancer patients. How much money did you raise? I have raised $15,000 in total. All right, great. I need you to check your answers with your friends. Very good. Now, number one, Max says he doesn't mind sharing his brownies with friends who are also feeling down. Number two, Andrew likes Asian restaurants because he can't cook that type of food at home. Number three, Samantha and her brother don't like each other as much after spending a lot of time together. Zenobia buys a bag if it's cheaper than usual. And Skylar took part in a charity event for people who are sick with cancer. All right, great, let's move. And this is a checklist of all the things you learn during chapter one and two. Can you describe your diet and the typical diet in your country and say how it is changing? course can you agree or disagree with the following statement and say why our favorite food is usually something we liked when we were children of course number three can you describe members of your family saying what they look like and what they are like of course number four can you describe some of your plans and predictions for the future for example your education your family life and the last one, can you ask and answer the following questions? Have you ever won any money? How much did you win? What did you do with it? How long have you been learning English? Where did you first start learning? All right. 
you know a lot. It's time for the bonus clip. Okay, let's watch this clip together. Goodwill Industries. <laughs> I'm Julie, and this is New York City, my hometown. New York City is one of the most famous cities in the world, and is often called the city that never sleeps. New York City is the biggest city in the United States. More than 8 million people live here, and every year millions of tourists come from around the world. The city is known for its shopping, museums, restaurants, skyscrapers, and entertainment. New York City may not be as well known for its charity work, but the people that live here are very generous. The city is host to a world-famous organization, Goodwill Industries, a charity that has been helping people in need for over a hundred years. Today, there are Goodwill stores located all over New York City. But Goodwill Industries actually started in 1902 in Boston. The charity encouraged the rich to donate used goods to the poor. The first place the Goodwill's mission spread to was Brooklyn. In fact, Brooklyn was where the name Goodwill Industries was born. In 1922, the first Goodwill chapter was opened in Manhattan. Goodwill has become one of the most well-known thrift stores in New York City. Today, there are 14 Goodwill stores in the metro area, serving 100,000 people every year. This is the Goodwill store located on the Upper West Side of New York City. It's the first Goodwill boutique at a landmark brownstone. It opened in June 2013. This particular store offers stylish, quality clothing and small household items at affordable prices. Today, I'm meeting Brandy, a Goodwill staff member, to find out more about her work. Can you tell me what Goodwill does? Uh, Goodwill is a 501c3 nonprofit that enables people to gain independence through the power of work. And what all of that means is, is that Goodwill facilitates people to gain employment. Uh, people who were maybe coming from an at-risk situation, um, youth services programs, a homeless program. Goodwill reaches out to that community and enables those people to find gainful employment that changes their lives. And basically what that means for us here is that everything we sell here in this store, that money goes back into the programs, goes to those outreach programs, and helps those people facilitate that transition to work. Can you explain what you do in the shop? Uh, well, I'm the Upper West Side Boutique Manager for 72nd Street and what I do here at the store along with my employees is we accept donations, we process donations, price and tag them, organize the store and put everything out for customers to come in to purchase. What kinds of things do people donate? Well, people can donate a lot of different types of things. They will donate things like shoes, clothing, um, used electronics, pretty much anything that they want to clear their closets of, they'll bring to our boutique and then we will recycle them and put them out on the floor. What are some interesting things people have donated? Uh, some interesting things people have donated. Uh, we have had everything from a bedpan <laughs> to a pair of uh, $700 leather boots. So it really runs the gamut from inexpensive to high-end designer. Where does the money you receive go? Well, basically, the money that we receive goes 92 cents of every dollar back to the Goodwill mission. And that mission, again, is to enable people to gain independence through the power of work. That could be through our youth services programs, through programs that we're running through Goodwill Industries International, or through things like our retail store here on the 72nd Street. Why did you decide to work for Goodwill? Why did I decide to work for Goodwill? Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I actually love shopping um, and I love thrifting. I uh, especially love finding things that have a designer look to them, but not a designer price. And Goodwill definitely has that. It allows you to have a, a beautiful wardrobe or a beautiful house without necessarily paying a not so beautiful price tag. <laughs> have you ever bought anything for yourself here? 
I absolutely have, probably too much, but uh, things for myself here. I bought shoes here, um, housewares, really good. Goodwill has such a great selection, especially this location. We're really lucky we get beautiful donations here. So you can literally redecorate your entire house for the cost of what, what would have only been your curtains. Mm -hmm. Today, Goodwill Industries is one of the nation's most recognized nonprofit organizations. They not only sell used goods, but also help people looking for jobs. In 2010, Goodwill served nearly 2.5 million people. Over the years, numerous Goodwill leaders have traveled the world spreading the vision of helping people. As a result, there are currently 165 Goodwill organizations in the U.S. and Canada, with 13 Goodwill-affiliated organizations in other countries around the world. None of this would be possible without the help of its volunteers and the generosity of individuals donating money and goods to the charity. And even people like me, who love shopping for bargains. Great! But do you have something like this in your country? Speak with your friends. And another one in the basket. Well done. You see, little by little, and you will achieve your dream. I want you to be perfect. You can do it. Just believe it. Get out of this prison in your mind. You are capable. You have a talent. You should find it. Until then, see ya.